Hey everybody, this is Rich and you're with South Florida Beekeeping with Rich. And if ever there was an illustration of how different beekeeping is in South Florida than in the rest of the country, a cold front came through last night, a cold front which has plunged the rest of the country into a deep freeze. According to the weather report, it, it plunged to 69 degrees someplace in Broward County last night. Don't know where, by seven o'clock this morning it was 71 degrees in my backyard and it's about 78 degrees back here now. Obviously, the bees are flying happily. We've been for a walk this morning. The bees are gathering pollen, not just nectar. Uh, everybody's happy, healthy, and doing fine. But I'm really excited today to make this video because it was one I wasn't sure I was ever going to be able to make. Not because I'm bothered by doing something off label, but rather because I had a very specific set of instructions and procedures that I follow with what I'm about to demonstrate. And I've now, and I've worried that somebody might dismiss some of those and end up hurting their bees. So I probably wasn't going to tell you all about this, but conditions have changed. So what the hell am I babbling about? Well, I'm a gardener, landscaper, it's been my whole profession. And so when I learned years ago that small hive beetle have to exit the hive, the larvae, larvae have to exit the hive, go into the dirt to pupate to come back out, I said to myself, hey, there's a half a dozen lawn products out there that do nothing but kill like 50 different grubs. Now, small hive beetle larvae isn't one of the uses that the label is for, but a grub is pretty much a grub. And uh, I figured, well, I can put it underneath there, underneath my hives and around my hives, so the grubs are going to get into the soil, but we'll kill them. My concern with that was that most of these products are carried on a cornmeal base, just like chicken feed and such. And the problem with that is I've seen many, many videos of people saying, hey, look, it's early in the spring. There's no pollen available right now. And my bees are over here invading my chickens feed bowls in order to get the fine cornmeal powder. And so I was always concerned and worried that if I were to put this out, that uh, people would do it poorly and their bees might end up taking poisonous chemicals into the hive and doing damage. But a couple of days ago, Bob Binney on his site posted a lecture with Dr. Lewis Bartlett of the University of Georgia. And in that video, he took this product, Scott's Grub X, and literally he, wanted, he went through the whole thing. He started out by taking some of this, just picked up at Walmart, put it in a bowl of water, dissolved it for a little bit, drew off the clear liquid left from that, squirted it on some small high beetles, grubs, and they curled up and died. And he started investigating this as a small hive beetle control. And what he found out was that they just about couldn't poison small hive beetles with this stuff. Um, no, I'm sorry, they, they couldn't poison bees with this stuff. He's quite right. He couldn't poison bees with this stuff. It'll kill small hive beetles at very low concentrations, but even at very high concentrations, it has almost no impact on bees. I mean, there was a graph in there that where Concentration, concentration goes up, 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 and eventually you started getting a little bit of mortality in bees over here like this. But the small hive beetles, the mortality went up like this and peaked long before this. So at this point here, which was a level of concentration that did very little, boop, it was already at the highest point of killing the small hive beetles. And the thrilling part about that from their standpoint is that they're going to develop a product that can be mixed with the pollen patty so that if the small hive beetles go up and start eating the pollen patty, it'll kill them, but the pollen patty is perfectly safe for the bees. Now, what this means to me all the way around 
is that I can tell everybody, hey, look, this works. I've been telling my fellow beekeepers here in the Broward County about this for some time now. A lot of them have tried it. They have all had really great positive results with it. But here I can, you know, face to face and stress the importance of making sure that from my standpoint that they didn't leave anything on the ground that could uh, end up being taken back into the hive by the bees. Now it turns out I didn't have to worry about any of that. It, particularly if you use this particular chemical. Now, I always buy a different brand every time I buy this. I go to Home Depot, they have like five different grub type materials. And each time I buy one, I don't buy the same one the next time around because I don't want to take a chance of building up any immunity. Uh, this particular one that they're studying is uh, clothinidin. And it's, uh, I don't know if it's uh, registered just for Scott's or whether other companies are using it too, but I always check to make sure I'm getting some active ingredient that's different than the last active ingredient when I do this. So some of this one is on a clay base. Some of them are on a cornmeal base. So I still want to demonstrate how I do this. So if you'll pan over here, you'll see where I have thrown a cornmeal based ant and grub killer all around the hives here. Step one, you throw it down, you brush off whatever might be on the little concrete step in front of it. Step two for me is to use this tool because I keep a bare earth bed. You guys who have grass all around it, well, you just put it down on the grass, you take the rake, you rake the grass so that it's not sitting on the surface, it works its way down in, should still be perfectly safe for bees. And if you're if you have uh, weed whacked around your hives before you do this, which I strongly suggest you do, so that there's no flowers and no particular reason for the bees to be hanging out on the ground around your hives, should be perfectly good. It's just that I like to work it into the soil, particularly underneath the hives. With the hoe. This, well, in the trade, this was called a scuttle. In the 60s, it was marketed as the hula ho. It is a standard commercial beekeeping tool, uh, usually available most places. Pardon me? Commercial landscaping tool, yes. Uh, bed crews use them all the time. I don't, I'll usually just use it on the edges of the bed here just because I want to wipe out a few weeds at the same time. I don't use poisons around the hive. This is the way I keep this stuff bare is with this. You know, once every six or eight weeks, I just kind of go through. But if it's dry out and I feel I need to put this down, then spread it, kind of disturb it, a little bit of raking on the surface like this. And then I would take a uh, hose with a spray attachment on it and I'd spray it down just to make sure there was no dust. But apparently I was being overly cautious, which, hey, I still strongly recommend being overly cautious. But we've had tremendous success down here. Uh, those those uh, fellow club members who have chosen to do this have noticed a significant reduction in the small high beetle populations. Because remember, the beetles have to drop through to the ground and they have to find the ground. If you have just mulch down, okay, they'll just burrow through the mulch. If you have like tar paper down or some other solid surface down, they're going to land on it, they're going to crawl to the edge, they're going to go down. So putting it around the edge of the block is particularly important, but I just spread it all the way around. We've had plenty of rain. Everything here is moist. I don't need to worry about dust. There's plenty of pollen in the environment. The bees are out gathering it today. So we're good to go there. Uh, and particularly the chemical that is right here in this. I strongly recommend go to Bob Binney's website. Look at his latest video, which is a reposting of a video from the University of Georgia. 
We'll put a link to it in the show notes. Use the Scott Scrub X. Get underneath there. It makes a pretty immediate difference. I mean, within a couple of weeks, you'll start seeing small high beetle numbers go down if that's all you do. Uh, that's it for now. I have... I have a question. Yes. So the question is, is this only because you're using a screen bottom board? It's better because I'm using a screen bottom board that from underneath there, because otherwise they'd be falling down. They'd just be coming out the front, which I guess, you know, that standpoint, you can put more of it in the front. Yes, I use a screen bottom board. If they drop to the bottom of the bottom board, they're just going to crawl out the front door. But is it still effective? It's Absolutely. This is people I see. Uh, she, she's asking me, is it still effective that way? Yes, of course, it's perfectly effective. Pardon me. If you don't use a screen bottom board, yes, it's still effective if you don't use a screened bottom board. <laughs> I'm being accused of giving her that look. <laughs> I'm sure you all know that look. <laughs> yes. If, these, if the small high beetle larvae can crawl out of Dr. Jamie Ellis's lab on the second floor of a building, crawl down the hall, down a flight of steps, across the uh, foyer, and out front, yes, they can make it out of a screened bottom, or out of a solid bottom board. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully I'll have some neat new news for you sometime soon. I have recently put two interesting beetle traps in a couple of my hives that we'll do a video on here if they work out in a few weeks. But for now, this is Rich. This has been Beekeeping with Rich. Be sure to like and subscribe as we continue our beekeeping journey here in South Florida. Have a great day, everybody.